can't praise him enough. We can't thank him enough. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We just want to just go before the Lord today and and to speak with you today on a message that I know some of you have probably heard two or three times recently, but I, I believe that there are some perhaps today that that God wants to speak to and and he and he's given this message to me again to 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 bring it out because there's such a need these days to talk about the things that the enemy is trying to do to bring hindrance to the saints to, to slow you down to uh, to get you to where you are not uh, operating fully where God wants you to be in fact there are some some things that come to our mind and we begin to think on certain things that uh, make us think, well, we can't do that. I'm not able to do that. Or for whatever reason, you got to realize that the enemy sees the anointing that's on your life and he is threatened by that. And one of his main tools in his, I would say an arsenal in his toolbox is procrastination. Everybody say procrastination. This is one of the things I believe that the enemy has really ministered to many saints and that, that, that we get to the place to where, uh, we know what we're supposed to do, when we're supposed to do, but we sometimes hinder ourselves by slowing down, by waiting, by saying things like, Oh, I'll just wait on the Lord. When in actuality, God is waiting for us. Come on now. You know that the Lord has given you something to do or something that you're supposed to be involved in and, and, and you're waiting and waiting and postponing and putting off. But this waiting and postponing and putting off is not so much you waiting on the Lord, but it's a matter of you delaying what God wants you to do. Now, that may be speaking to somebody today and that may not necessarily be everybody who hear me. But I'm not going to say that the rest of you go to sleep because I know it's going to touch all of us some kind of way because all of us have had the attack of procrastination. Amen. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from or what your area of ministry is. I'm sure that you have had the attack where you have felt like you needed to just procrastinate on things. You wanted to, to, to hold off on and I said, no, not right now. But I believe there are some things that the Lord is saying, go forward. You know, there was a time when he said to Israel, he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I don't want you to do anything at this point. I just want you to stop and listen to what the Lord would say to you. There are times he'll say, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But then there are other times when he'll say, go forward. And sometimes when we get the go forward, we stand still. <laughs> Come on. And there are times when we get to stand still and we're ready to go forward. But the point is, we need to be ready to go as the spirit leads. As the spirit of the Lord leads, we need to move as he moves. Come on now. So we want to understand a little bit more about what is this procrastination and how is it that the devil is using this against us? People are habitually late for some things. Now, I understand that there are times when people without any kind of, without any kind of fault of your own, that you can be late for some things. Things would delay you. Things would throw you off. It happens to all of us. And it happens once in a while. But when you are habitually late, you need to realize that that's a spirit behind that. Oh, my goodness. I, I, a young lady said to me not too long ago, she said, I'm going to be late to my own funeral. I don't know what she meant by that. <laughs> but but she was trying. She was saying it in in jest. But at the same time, we need to realize some of the things coming out of our mouths can be devastating. But realize this, that we need to not get into that position where we are habitually late for everything. Late for work, late for church, late, late, late. Everybody get to know you as the late whoever your name is. <laughs> you don't want to be known as the late so-and-so. 
when you're still alive. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's an opposite term, and this is, is the, it's the word uh, anticipation. Everybody say anticipation. anticipation. Now, anticipation means that you are looking forward to a good outcome with excitement. Amen. Looking forward to a good outcome with excitement. But procrastination means the action of delaying or postponing something. Sometimes people will delay and postpone paying their bills. That's not always a good thing. Sometimes people are delaying and postponing appointments. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes people are delaying and postponing getting to the airport or getting to the bus station or, uh, or, or to get, your, get to your ride. How many of you realize that that's definitely not a good thing? I don't know if you've ever experienced having to do the thing that O.J. Simpson used to do years ago in a Hertz commercial where he was running through the airport trying to catch his plane. But, and and I, I've been in situations where the plane that I was on was late and it was a connecting flight. And then I got to the, the next airport and the, the connecting flight uh, gate was way down there somewhere. I mean, I had to go almost a mile just to get to it. And I'm running with my bags and everything. And I'm telling you, it, it is not fun to be late. As a matter of fact, when I got to, the, to that gate and, and I had to go through security and they stopped me at the security place there and uh, they started, they, they, the alarm went off and they had to take the things out of my bag to see what was going on. Why, why was the alarm going off? And they started moving things out and I said, my goodness, they're unpacking everything I got in here. And it got down to it. There was something in there buzzing and they thought it was a bomb in there or something. And when they, when they reached down and pulled out what it was, it turned out to be my electric razor. <laughs> and so now they, they're holding up the plane because they get folks going through my things. There is security, all because my electric razor went off in my bag. But in a way, it's not a good feeling when you're late for anything. Often when you're late, you're, you forget something very important and you will you will find that it is very unfavorable for you when you uh, have to rush and hurry. And, and when you're rushing and hurrying, uh, something just goes wrong. But you know, there are remedies for procrastination. I want to talk to you about a few remedies for procrastination. Number one, it's good that you will start preparing early. Everybody say start early. Sometimes if you know that you have to be somewhere the next day, it's good to start a day early to put things out in place. My mother used to put out uh, my clothes uh, on the bed so that I, I would have my clothes already ironed and, and they were ready. So when I got up to go to school, I'd be able to just just put, put them on. Uh, you know, then that, that would, that would take care of some of the time of having to prepare. And so that was just a habit that I started learning years later, you know, that it's good to just start a day early to prepare. And for me, I, I know that works for my benefit because I am generally a slow person. I mean, I move slow. And so if I move slow, that means I have to start early. So if I if I start early, it'll look like I'm 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 moving like that, you know, because I, I can be on time for most things. So so when I'm a slow mover, uh, that that works to my benefit if I start early. Next thing that's important is good that you will get a if you need to get a trusted friend or somebody to remind you of your appointment or, or the time that you're supposed to get up and get, get going. Because if you're somebody who is a, a slow riser, uh, you love the bed and you lay in there and, and, and the best sleep comes at the time when you get ready to get up. When it's time to get up, that's the time when you're about to turn over and get that last good nap. And it feels so good. And when you start going off into that deep sleep, there's no way you're going to wake up in time. Some people wake up grumpy because they didn't get that last good nap in. <laughs> but sometimes it's good to, if you have somebody that can call you uh, or somebody that can wake you up or remind you of something. These days, you've got 
you got reminders on your phone where you can set your alarm clock on your phone. Most of us may not have a rooster, but if you got a phone, it may even have a, a, a ringtone that's got a rooster on there. You might want to put the rooster ringtone on there so you can wake up when the rooster crows. But you need something to wake you up. Sometimes, even if you don't have anybody to, to wake you up, it's a, a good thing to write things down. Number three, write things down. Write your appointments down. Write, use a calendar or something that you can write on, that you can, that you can put your eyes on that thing every day. You say, well, what do I have to do tomorrow? What do I have to do the next day? And start, start writing your appointments down. Now, I, I write things still down using pen and, and paper. I have a, I have a, a book that I use as, as a calendar. But many people use their electronics these days, your phones, your tablets and computers. You got all of that today to help you out. So when you write down your appointments, it will put a reminder on there for you. So go ahead and write things down and that'll help you get moving a lot faster. Next thing is good to train yourself to prioritize. When, especially when you're writing things down, know how to set priorities. What's important? What's not so important? Some things you can do in the, in the day and some things you may have to put off for the next day. But there are some things that you are, you, you should not put off and you put those things at the top. Yeah. And so when you put those things at the top and then you, you, you do it, and once you've done that, check it off so that you know you, you've already accomplished that. You feel so good once you look down. I know I do. When I look down and I see all those checks on, on my calendar, let me know, hey, I've accomplished something. I did something. <laughs> I did something worthwhile. Because I had something important and I, and I, and I did that thing and I got it done. Now some of the other things that's not so important, I can put those off for another day. So I don't have to pile everything up in one day. I don't have to pile everything up all at one time. And that way I can stretch it out a little bit so that I won't be in a rush. Do you realize that rushing really puts you in a disadvantage? Because when you're rushing, you can easily forget something. I've forgotten some important things. I've, tried, I've been rushing out the house uh, in a hurry for something, and, and, and I couldn't even remember where I put my car keys. And so I, that, that delays me when I have to go back and I try to find my keys. Where are my keys? Where are my keys? Got everybody looking for my keys. All because I just didn't put them where they were supposed to be. And then I, when I got in a rush, I couldn't find where I put it. So that's, that's the next thing. It's important that you place things in the same place. Put them, when you get through using something, put it back. Like, why, why are you talking about this in, in church? Because this is a part of the kingdom of God. This, this is all, we, we, we're having to what? Perfect ourselves, right? So, so, so this is one of the areas where we're attacked and, and sometimes we just need to be reminded or, or, or to be, be talked to concerning some very practical things. And all of us are dealing with this. But I'm hoping this is going to help somebody just to remind you, look, these are some things that you can do to overcome the enemy. Because the devil will use it against you when you are habitually late. Don't you just just don't move fast enough or you just don't uh, consider it important to be on time. And so lots of people have been fired from their jobs because they're habitually late. People have, have, have missed out on many things because they are habitually late. So once again, if you have a place where you put your things, make sure you put it back when you finish using it. And don't be like I have been in the past where I, once I'm in a hurry, I'm trying to find that and it just delays my time. <laughs> and we've mentioned don't overwhelm yourself with activities. If you overwhelm yourself with activities, you won't get much accomplished. So all of these are the things that can help you to overcome procrastination. Now, just like it happens in everyday life, and this is a practical thing that we should practice, practice, practice all the time, and that is that we are making ourselves or be disciplined enough to be on time where we have to go. It's better to be early than late. It's better that somebody is waiting, uh, that, that I am waiting for somebody than they are waiting for me. 
In other words, if you got a job interview, uh, you don't want them waiting for you. <laughs> Glory to God. So it, it's better that you can be there early. I, I've seen situations where people are, 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 especially their first day on the job, they are always there before everybody else gets there. First day on the job. I'm, I'm going to be on time my first day. And you're there before anybody else get there. And then everybody else start coming in. What, what are you doing here so early? What are you doing? Oh, I just want to, I want to be prompt. I want to be prompt. You know, you, you get a few paychecks and work there for a month or so. And here you come dragging in late. <laughs> then your habit becomes late. <laughs> so you want to stay prompt and let that be your testimony. The same thing works in the kingdom of God, in the spirit. We need to look at what the scripture says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We can turn there. He said, was he going to ever turn to a Bible scripture? Yes. Bible scriptures that remind us that being on time is better than being late. That procrastination works against us. It's a, it's a demonic force that pushes us back into the old ways and keeps us from having the kind of testimony that we are children of the kingdom. So we go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 2 because here it starts to tell us about how important it is to make sure that we are right with God because that's something that we definitely don't want to delay. We want to have our relationship right with the Lord and if there's a delay, then that we, it can be too late. And nobody wants to be too late. First Thessalonians 5 and 2 says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. That means not to have some controlling substance controlling your mind. That's what it means to be sober. You want to have good thinking. Amen. The Bible lets us know that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a what? Sound mind. So he said that we have to watch. We have to be sober. Verse 7 says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So you see what he's saying is that when we, if people delay coming to the Lord, then he's going to come back in a time when you least expect it. He calls it a thief in the night. Jesus is not a thief. No, but his coming is going to be like that. In other words, if a thief was coming to your house to rob your house, he's not going to call you 30 minutes ahead of time and say, I'll be there in 30 minutes. Amen. No, he's not going to call you ahead of time and let you know he's coming. No, a thief is going to sneak up on you. And if you're not prepared, if you have not gotten some kind of security, he can get in and take whatever he wants to take. Jesus is coming is very similar to that. If you are not prepared, if you are not ready, his coming is going to be just like a thief in the night that he will come in an hour that you would not even expect. And if you're not ready, you don't have time to get ready. There's no going back to get something. There's no going back to help somebody else. There's no going back to get something else done. No, it's too late. Everybody say too late. And so that's the reason he says, don't put salvation off. 
Don't put salvation off. This is something that you must do if you want to be with the Lord forever and ever. If you want eternal life, don't procrastinate and say, well, I'll wait until I, I'm an old person. Oh, I'll wait until I get certain things done. I'll wait for this and I'll wait for that. No, he's saying it's best to do it now. Be ready because you don't want him to come as a thief in the night for you. But those who are in the day talking about the saints, he said, you're not you're not like they are. You're not like the sinners. You are not supposed to be asleep. You are awake. And for you, he would not come as a thief in the night because you are already ready. Oftentimes people thinking of this as only the rapture or when Jesus returns to, to catch the saints away. But it could also mean whenever he comes for your soul. People are dying every day of all ages. And I don't know why people think that, you know, it can never happen to them. But look at all of the young people who are dying and coming to unexpected deaths. I'm not talking about they've been sick for a long period of time. I'm talking about people who they got up that day and they went about that day like a, like a normal and doing everything that they wanted to do. And they figure, you know, uh, nothing's going to happen to me. And next thing you know, there could be anything, car accidents, a shooting. I mean, lives are taken just like that. Unexpected. Many of us are getting phone calls right now and, 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 and have gotten many phone calls. So and so's passed away. So and so died. So and so been killed. And then, I mean, these things are happening almost every day and on the news, mass shootings and murders. He's coming as a thief in the night because people are not expecting anything to happen to them. The Bible says, get ready now. The Bible teaches us that right now is the moment of salvation. In 2 Corinthians 6, 2, you can write it down if you don't have time to turn to it. But in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, the Bible says, for he says, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. When is the day of salvation, saints? Now. Now, what part of now don't we understand? N-O-W. In the Greek, now means now. Amen. Right now. Well, why, why you want to, why you want to rush me? Why you want to hurry me? You know, there, there are a lot of folks who feel like, you know, you know, I don't like being hurried. I don't like being rushed. Well, this is the one thing that needs to be rushed. Amen. And it, and the Bible, makes it clear all throughout the Bible. Many scriptures showing you that the one thing that God wants us to rush to and hurry to, and that is to get into the ark of safety. Amen. Come on, get born again, get saved. When you hear my voice, the Bible says, harden not your heart in Hebrews 4, 7. He says again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today after a long time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Heart. Somebody may be hearing the voice for the first time today. Somebody may be hearing his voice for the last time today. But he said, in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If you hadn't got your life right with, with the Lord yet, now is the time. Get it right now. Go before him now. Seek after him now. Don't let it be too late. He says, don't harden your heart thinking that you've got plenty of time. Then we also see in Matthew chapter 25, many of you are familiar with that, verse 1 through 13, I think. It talks about how that there were 10 virgins, five were foolish, five were, five were wise. And remember what it says that the bridegroom would be coming and those who were wise, they had their oil lamps trimmed and they had the lights on waiting for the bridegroom to come. But those who were foolish did not get any extra oil. They didn't get any oil for their lamps. And so when the bridegroom came, they, they didn't have their lights shining. Their lights were not burning. And so they were ready to try to borrow some oil or, uh, from, the, from those who had some. And they said, no, it's too late. We can't, we can't give you of our oil. You, you, you run out and see if you can buy you some. Go, go into the city. The store is still open. Go see if you can buy you some. But, but we can't let you have ours. And as they went out to buy oil, the bridegroom came and took those who were ready 
and they went on into the supper. But those who were too late came back saying, what happened? What happened? Where'd it go? They come knocking on the door and, uh, of the chamber and saying, we're here now. We're here now. And he said, depart from me. I know you not. I don't know you. You didn't have your light on, so I didn't know who you were. Amen. Your light wasn't shining. We've sang that song many times. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. We need to let our light shine starting right now. And don't let it go out. Come on now. That light needs to shine all your life. And don't just let it go out. Because when you die, you don't get another chance. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Yeah, some people died and been raised from the dead. Oh, yeah, there have been many people who, who died and been raised from the dead before. But he says there is a pointed time. There's an appointed time. I have gone to places uh, a week early before, but my appointment was the next week. I was there, but I couldn't go in and, and, and do whatever I went there for because I got there too early. I said, oh, okay, well, I'll go back, and then next week I'll come on time. Well, that's the same thing. There are people who have died. Their bodies have uh, stopped, and, and then uh, the life came back into them because what? They had some more to do. So God would send them back because it wasn't their appointed time. Come on. So, but when the appointed time came, then they go before the judgment, and it ain't no coming back. Did y'all get that? There are, there's an appointed time. And then the Bible says that there are some wicked people who would die before their time. So that means that they have an appointed time, but they are wicked and they have to go before their appointed time because of the things that they're doing in their life that, that it is urged on their death and they died before their appointed time. But there is an appointed time for every one of us. And when you meet that appointed date, there is no coming back. Oh, we don't mean to scare you today, but yes, we do. If that's what it takes to get you where you need to be in the Lord, then sometimes people have to be frightened enough to think, I don't want to go to hell. I want to be right with Jesus, and I want to be ready when he comes for me. Come on now. What must we do to be saved? What do we have to do? We see in Acts chapter 16, verse 16, I believe, where, where, the, where the men came out in the prison in Philippi and, and Paul and Silas were singing and they were in prison. And at midnight, they were singing and praising God and praying. And then the earthquake came and shook away their, their stocks and their, and their chains. And, they, and the prisoners were free. And the jailer wanted to commit suicide because he said, oh, my goodness, these Prisoners have probably escaped, but he couldn't see through the dark. And so he, he asked for a light when Paul said, do yourself no harm. We are still here. And when he got a light and went in and he saw all the prisoners were still in there, he knew God had done something amazing. He said, whatever these men got, if they can sing and they can praise God and, and pray at midnight and when things are going bad for them, whatever they have, I want what they got. And so he said, man, what must I do to be saved? Paul says, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved and your house. Acts 2.37, when people ask in Peter, he says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 38 in Acts chapter 2, 37 and verse 38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent. Change your ways. Be willing to turn around and go the other way. Don't keep going in the way that you're going. Yeah. Recognize that you are a sinner and then believe that Jesus Christ is the only way that you can come to God and then see, confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's what repentance is all about. Yeah. A, acknowledge that you're a sinner and that you need salvation. 
B, believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to God. And C, confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, meaning that you're going to depend completely on him and nothing else. He says, repent. And then he says, you can be baptized. Be baptized in water. That is an outward showing of what has already happened on the inside. The water doesn't save you, but the water just shows that you are now identifying with the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You go down a sinner and you come up a saint. You don't want to go down a, a, a dry devil and come up a wet devil. You want to be changed before you even get in the water. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And then he says, you're baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. And then the rest is left up to God. He said, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost gift? That means that God will give you the gift of his power that's going to keep you. The gift of his power that's going to anoint you. The gift of his power that saves you and regenerates you. It turns you into a brand new creature so that when you do die, you will rise up in the day of the resurrection. You will not stay dead in the grave, but you're going to be with the Lord forever and ever. That's a promise from God. The Holy Ghost seals you throughout all eternity. Because once you've been born of God... You are sealed forever. You are sealed so that nothing can get in and nothing can come out. <laughs> you are sealed and you are, you are approved of God and God will keep you and nothing will take you out of his hand. So he says, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and you will be born again. Now I'm going to close with this that you have Four days that you can make your decision for Christ. That's what he's giving us. Four days that you can make your decision for Christ. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, and too late. You get to choose. When are you going to come to the Lord? Yesterday, today, tomorrow, or too late. Yesterday is gone. Today, you have time. Tomorrow is not promised to you. But too late is eternal. You need to choose one of those four days. But I would suggest you choose today. If you choose today to give your heart to Jesus. Some of you say, well, I'm already saved, but there are some other things that you're procrastinating about. Maybe you're procrastinating about going into a ministry that God is calling you into. Maybe you're procrastinating about uh, starting a, a business that God is putting in your heart. Maybe you're procrastinating about some other venture that you know that you ought to be in procrastinating and putting it off and putting it off and delaying all because you're scared. But you got to understand. Perfect love cast out fear. Amen. If you do it as unto the Lord, you don't have to worry about it because he says once again that God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but power, love and a sound mind. He wants you to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. If you walk by faith and not by sight, that means you go into this thing trusting in the Lord. Amen. You don't have to be afraid. Whatever it is, maybe he's saying get married to so and so. Don't be afraid. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to protect you. Whatever it might be that God is bringing you into, he's saying, don't be afraid. I am with you. Don't procrastinate. This may be your time to get right into that thing. And if this is the time, you can go forward in the power of God. With the motive of love, you will not fail. Amen. Many people are afraid of failure. But you will not fail if you do it in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Would you stand to your feet at this time? Come on, give the Lord another praise offering as we go before him in prayer. Bless him, bless him. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you right now for this word today. 
Many of us are struggling at times with procrastination. And we pray right now that that spirit of procrastination is broken off of people. The bondage that that is that is brought people into. I say now in Jesus name that that bondage be broken off now in Jesus name. Somebody who needs to make a move, somebody who needs to to go forward in what you're calling them to do. Somebody who needs to make a change in their life right now. God, in the name of Jesus, we break that chain of procrastination. We break that yoke off right now in the name of Jesus. And we say now in Jesus name that you are free. To move forward, that you will move your feet a little faster, that you will get yourself prepared faster, that you will move along and do what you need to do early so that you will not be too late for the things that set out before you. And some, Lord Jesus, are not sure. And I pray, Father, that you begin to show people what it is that you want them to do, where you want them to take them. Let them know, Lord God, that as you are Pouring that revelation and understanding into their heart that it is coming from you. Yes. Let, them, let them have the confirmation that it is coming from you. That that's not of themselves. And Lord God, whatever that may be in that person or those people, I say in Jesus name that they are free to make that decision and to hold to your hand, Lord God. And when they feel like they cannot hold on, I know you're holding on to them. In the name of Jesus. And that one that's watching right now who has not given their heart to you, I speak to you today. If you have not given your heart to Jesus Christ, this is the moment to do so. All you need to do is pray a prayer like this in all sincerity and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. I'm asking you, Lord, to fill me with your spirit. Baptize me with your spirit so I can be born of you, Lord God. Bless me to come into your kingdom. And Lord, Give me the strength that I need to live a holy life. And I commit my life to you right now. I, I, I turn away from sin. I turn away from the old ways so that I can live for you, Lord. And I thank you for accepting me into your family. And I receive you right now by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you believe in that right now, you believe that prayer, then God would do the rest and help you to do what you need to do. Find a good church to go to where the word of God is being taught and you can get the understanding and clarity and a place where you can work in the kingdom of God. Get yourself busy in the things of the kingdom of God and you'll find that your life is meaning, meaningful. You want a meaningful life and it takes you right on into eternity. Thank you, Lord. Give us a call or contact us at the information at the bottom of your screen and we would love for you to come by and visit with us here at Miracle Deliverance Temple of Christ. We're at 50 uh, Meadowview Street. Amen. The information that is on your screen, contact us and come by and visit with us in any of our services and we will welcome you. God bless you. Be sure to join us again next time for Day of Deliverance. Come on, give the Lord a praise offering today.